Hi everybody, my name is Dennis. Welcome to my channel. Today I've gone back to a video I never did to actually produce. Uh, it's how to build inside the H440 case. All right, I did this all up. I did little bits and pieces of different components, but I never actually showed the whole step by step. Now, mind you, I neglected to show actually fitting the motherboard into the case, but if you need to see that, there'll be a link at the end for how to do a complete uh, computer build. Now, I've done the uh, time codes, so the time codes you can go right directly to putting the motherboard in or any of the other stuff. Uh, I didn't show the M.2 install. Uh, I showed you basically how to put it in, but there's if you want to see a video on, on all the ins and outs of an M.2, let me know and I'll create a video for that. Otherwise, hope you enjoy this video. And remember, it's not actually a complete build, it's just an overview. Hope you enjoy. So to start this build, the first thing you got to do is prep your motherboard, which is, means putting in your memory, in my case, an M.2 drive, and going from there. So we'll do that first. Okay, so I got two sticks of LPX Vengeance DDR4. Now that's memory from Corsair. So we're going to put those in first. Okay, so installing your memory. This one doesn't come back. These ones do. Okay, so just pull them back. And we're just going to insert them in here. Now, if I try to do that, it's not going to work because your slots are here. Oh, so I just put it in here. Push right down. And there you'll hear it click in place. Okay, so I always consult my motherboard manual when I'm doing this just to make sure things are right. And I suspected what I was doing was wrong. So just to point it out, your memory goes in your second and fourth slot if you're only installing two. If you're installing four, then you fill all four slots, of course. All right, but just to point that out. So I initially filled the first two banks and that was wrong. So it's the second one and the fourth one. So just in case you were wondering, that's the type of memory I'm using. DDR4, two 8 gigabyte sticks that give me a 16 gigabyte memory and it will overclock to 3200 megahertz. So next is my 512 gig M.2 PCIe Gen 3 and 4 SSD. So we're going to install that. And just to give a perspective of size, that's how small it is. Very, very tiny. Alright. Okay, so the things uh, when you buy an M.2 drive that you want to look for, on here you can see that it says an M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 3 times 4 SSD. Okay, now there's, a, there's two different slots on this motherboard. One is for the 2280, and the other one I believe is the 2210, but don't quote me on that because I haven't looked it up yet. So that one, when you look on the motherboard, is closest to your memory. It's this one right here. Okay, so that's where your little great looking little device right here, that's where it's going to go to. So it's going to go in there like this. You're going to put the screw in and that's going to fasten in place. And that basically is your 512 gig SSD for your motherboard. That's your storage. In addition to more storage I'll add later. So you're just going to slide this in here. Okay, it just goes in. It'll pop down in here, and then this little screw is just going to go right in there. And that's it. Okay, so the next thing that's going to go in is your i7 7700K CPU. So first you just take it out of the package, hold it by the sides, be very careful, don't drop it. I know it makes me cringe every time I touch it. Okay, when you look on it, it's got a little triangle right here. So if we look on here, it's going to have a triangle too. So let's just, so the first thing you're going to do is depress this. Okay, pull it out and lift it up. Okay, you might have to push back on this. Okay, so if you're still not sure how it goes on, one of the other things you can look for, there's this little groove here and there's another little groove here. And on your motherboard, there's going to be that little round pin here and here. Okay, so if you line it up like that, Okay, just make sure it's in the corner. And there, it goes into those grooves. That's pretty much it. So now you're just going to lower it down. Okay. Now, make sure this is going underneath of this screw here. All right. And when you push it down, you're going to push it down back underneath here. Okay, just watch. Now, it's going to make some noise. Don't worry, that's okay. 
and that's it and of course your cover is going to come off hang on to your cover you're going to need it if you ever have to RMA this in case it doesn't work if you don't have it you may not be able to return it and that's it that's our CPU install so before I put the motherboard in first thing you have to do is check your standoffs so I went through checked all my standoffs okay all the different ones for the ATX motherboard and I made sure they were nice and tight uh, in this case and I've reviewed this in the past it's one of my previous videos they're all good to go so now I'm basically going to do a dry fit of the motherboard and I'm going to insert it I've already put the IO shield in I mean once you've seen it done once you can see it's nothing to it it's the same every time and again I've done a previous video on building a computer you can look at that if you need help or advice so I'm just going to put the motherboard in now so I forgot to actually show the me putting in the uh, motherboard and maybe a couple other little things so I hope you don't get too upset over that if you need to have a complete step-by-step -step, everything to do with building a computer I have a video that I'll put at the end of this so you can have a look in that and just uh, see every detailed step thank you power supply I got for my case is a semi-modular EVGA Nex 750B now with this case you're going to want to feed all the cables you're actually going to use through the back because once you've got everything in there you don't want to be taking it back out because this back plate comes off so I fasten the bracket hey you can see how it's fastened on hey and you still have your four screws that go in here these are going to fasten it to the case all right so your power supply always goes to the fan down in this case in particular and you got your big cut out here where all your cables are going to go through now is when you want to figure out which cables you're going to need extra. So you know you're going to need your graphics card. You're going to need an additional hard drive. In my case, uh, another 2 terabyte drive. So all I need is my SATA cable for power for both the pump and the hard drive. I'm going to put in two. If I don't need two, I'll take one out. And the only other thing we're going to need is the um, graphics card. And that's it. So it's just the PCIe connector. Because this is a semi-modular... Uh, power supply so it already has your 24 pin and your CPU okay so just to recap I've got three plugins that I plugged in here so I've already got my power for 24 pin CPU there's extra connectors for the CPU that I'm not going to need so that'll all get put in the back here it'll come out through here so the only other ones I added I added a couple SATA cables and the graphics card so I'm going to slide that into the back, cables come out through here, and that'll be it. I've never done it with a shroud before, so there we go, we're just going to feed them all through there. Get all our cables out. They'll be all nice and out of the way. Now, this is going to slide in here, and we'll put it in there. And that's all there is to it. So now I've got all my cables here to connect everything up, including my graphics card. And that'll be it. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention, I did see this in somebody else's video, and I realized afterward that I may have made a mistake, but I'm going to show you here that I didn't. I'm going to find the right cable here. Okay, so, so your 8 pin CPU connector. Right, we'll feed up through the back of here, and even though your radiator is in here, there is still enough of an opening to come inside and plug that in. All right, so as it turned out, there is lots of room there. You got a big opening here, and another one over here. There's no problem getting everything in this case so far. Although, I did have some tricky uh, situation with the radiator. But in the end, it all worked out. So I had to do a little bit of research to find out where everything went. And I wanted to make sure. So when it comes to your pump, the cable that goes from here definitely goes to where your connection for your CPU is. So your, where your CPU fan would normally go, that's where you want it. So when you install your water pump, make sure that if you're using the Z270F motherboard, that it goes on the CPU fan, which is the top uh, pin there. Okay, so the one in the bottom is the CPU optional. You can kind of see the lettering there and it tells you which one it is. So the other thing 
was this cable here. Okay, because you've got four connectors. So bottom line is these two are just extras. So if you're going to need extra fans you want to plug in, you can do that. Uh, I did a bit of research just to making sure that was accurate, and it is. And then you've got your one uh, connector from your one fan going here, and your other one goes here. It kind of makes it a little bit messy for your cable management, but that'll be alright. Once I get it all done, I'll do tie downs and it'll be in place. So the only thing left in terms of the water cooler now um, is just getting the system put together and showing you the uh, colors. So we'll go on to that in a little bit. So one more thing just in case I didn't show it. Your cable that I ran through here going into your pump, okay, it just connects here. Alright, it's just a SATA connector. So this part goes into a SATA. Okay, so the two of them just push together and that get, that's how it'll get its power. And of course the CPU um, for the pump. And I managed to tie those cables off pretty good. They're, they're in there pretty good. They'll, they'll fit in there. Nice, lots of tie downs. So when all is all tucked away in here, this mess won't look quite so bad. When you're connecting your PWM fan hub, in order to get all your lights on your H440Ks working, there's two connectors. So these here. Okay, so when you get them, they'll be separated. You have to join them together, and then in order to make the rest of it work, there's also a uh, Molex connector. So you want to make sure that you take the Molex connector, make sure you have a Molex um, thing from your power supply, and then connect them together. Once you've done all that, all your fans, everything will work from that point on. Okay, so when all is said and done, your pump is working, the color scheme is working, my is red and black with my H440Ks, and you can see everything is all lit up real nice. And of course this is all done using the CAM software. So I'll just show you that for just a little bit here, just to give you an idea of what it is. Of course you download it from www.nsetxt.com. Go to the downloads link and look for the uh, CAM software. And in there you want to look for the Kraken and check mark that when you download it. Okay, so you can see the Kraken software is the last thing you need to do. Where you can see you got your silent mode and you can change modes in the bottom. So, we're going to go ahead and do a couple little settings here and I'll show you what happens. So, we go into the settings here which is a little kind of grayed out. Okay, you go to your lighting. Okay, this is telling you your temperatures. Okay, so you got your logo for your like for your LED which is here and you got the ring which goes around okay so you can go edit settings and you can choose which one you want so if you want the logo and not the ring you can go logo and I like uh, breathing so I'm gonna go breathing and red and I'm gonna save changes now if I pan over to my computer here, you'll see that now it's breathing and it's red. So, but the outside is blue. Well, that's no good. So, I'm going to go back here. All right, and one more time. We're going to now go back, take off the logo. I'm going to go to the ring. And I want it red as well. It's just, it's what I like. So we're going to go save changes again and again it's on breathing and now if we pan back over okay so you can play with that as much as you want same as the motherboard you can do the changes right now the motherboard is kind of showing more of a pinkish than uh, red and that's it so We'll go through this. We can do a little bit more here. Lock it in. And you can see that it's got breathing, fading, fixed, marquee. So you can play with all those and just kind of get a feel for all the different ones. And of course, I'm just going to click this and say save changes. And it should be both of them. Yep, so they're both breathing red. And that's it. Alright everybody, I hope you liked that video. If you like it, hit the like. If you don't, you know what to do. Subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. 
Stay tuned for more in the future. Thanks for watching.